I'm here to talk to you all about empowerment today, but I want to let you know right off the bat I'm not a subject matter expert. I'm just someone who's experienced a lot of empowerment in my life, and now I won't shut up about it. So you have to listen to me. Please bear with me a little bit as I speak. I have a um, word recall problem, as you'll find out. So sometimes I pause a little bit, and I'm like, what? what was I talking about? And we'll figure it out together. It'll be fine. <laughs> Sorry. I was medically retired from the Air Force in 2016 as a senior airman. For those of you who are unfamiliar with <laughs> the way rankings work, in the US Air Force, um, I'll let you know that a senior airman is an E4. And if you look at a hierarchy of, um, of command, uh, you got the bottom person like down here on the ground, right? And you have the top person like here. And I would have been like two and a half centimeters off the ground. So <laughs> just so we can really understand how far I made it in my illustrious career. My career didn't end the way that I thought it was going to. Um, it certainly wasn't what I had planned out for my life. But here I was, 2016, faced with this medical retirement from the Air Force, and I was devastated. I was a contracting specialist in the Air Force, which basically means I was a nerd. Um, my biggest fears throughout any typical day was maybe getting squashed in the stacks or getting lemon in my paper cup while I made my afternoon tea. So how does someone like me who works in a desk, um, how does someone like me get medically retired? Well, in 2012, I was raped and beaten by another Air Force member, uh, which ultimately resulted in several surgeries I don't know how many spinal injections, uh, a little stint in the TBI clinic, and ultimately a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder, which has been probably the hardest part of recovery is, is dealing with the mental health aspect of that. My story today is not about my super long career in the Air Force or about my assault, but there are important aspects of my story for you to understand just how broken, just how empty I was at this point in my life. At the very end of my enlistment, I had the opportunity to attend a care event, which is hosted by a by the Air Force Wounded Warrior Program, which is a DOD, um, sorry, words, DOD mandated program. Each branch has their own. I was in the Air Force, so the Air Force Wounded Warrior Program was mine. The Air Force Wounded Warrior Program helps take care of injured, ill, and seriously wounded uh, airmen as they transition from or as they go through a medical evaluation board or transition into back into civilian life. My very first camp that I went to, I, I went to a, a sports camp. They have several different tracks. They'll teach you adaptive sports. They'll teach you uh, mentorship, yada, yada, and on. But my first camp I was at was at an adaptive sports camp. This is hard for me, as I've been told you're not going to run again. And I know it's hard to tell from my incredible physique now, but I used to really enjoy running, um, especially mud runs. If anybody want to put me on an obstacle course, I'd just go run around and it was a blast. And so I went to this adaptive sports camp, not understanding exactly what adaptive sports was, but I was going to get home and have three days to out process from the Air Force, so I really didn't care anymore. I just showed up and, you know, showed up in color. When I got there, what do you think the very first sport they sent me to was? Track, y'all, track. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. I was in this place where everywhere I returned, I was told you can't. You can't 
your job anymore. You can't run anymore. You can't do this. You can't do that. By the way, for medically re retiring from the Air Force because you can't live the rest of your dream. And I was devastated. And to be put in this position where it was just one more thing that I couldn't do really got to me. So I need you to understand how bad of a place I was in when I got there. Uh, I was angry, you guys, so angry and so bitter. I, I was suicidal, actually, and I had a plan. My plan was to finish out this camp, go home, tie up my loose ends, and then kill myself. I had no plan B or C, nothing. I had been stripped of everything that was important to me. I had pushed family and friends away. I was losing this family that I had in the Air Force. I was being stripped of my blue, of my job, and I was stripped of my dignity. I had nothing left, absolutely nothing. And when I showed up to the track that day, that was the attitude that was festering in me. And the very first thing they told me was, we don't use the word can't. And I was like, watch me. <laughs> watch me use the word can't. And I had attitude. I said, well, what do you want me to do? Just walk around the track? And they said, no, go see that coach over there. That coach has the track chairs. And I'd never heard of a track chair. So I'm going to assume that maybe some of you don't know what a track chair is. A track chair is the alternative for people like me to get around the track. It's kind of like uh, an adaptive uh, wheelchair. You got two wheels in the back, one up front. And so they strapped a helmet to my head, stuck me in there, and sent me off around the track. And for the first time in almost two years, I felt the wind through my helmet hair. <laughs> I saw the track beneath my tires. And I realized that this word can't that I had, maybe they were on to something. Maybe I shouldn't be telling myself can't because maybe there's just another way for me to do the things that I want to do. Maybe there's another way. I went throughout the rest of the week and was introduced to many sports and no sport was I introduced to that they weren't able to adapt for me. This was the first time I really experienced empowerment after my traumas. It was during that camp that I also heard someone talk about, for the first time, I ever heard someone talk about their sexual assault. We got briefed all the time in the military, because it's an issue, all the time about sexual assault. But I never heard someone stand up. I'd never seen another face, face to face, tell me that they'd been through something like that. And that was powerful. It was so powerful for me. It rocked me. Because I now had a face. I wasn't alone. This initiated a change in my thought process. I got more involved with the program. I got a mentor, an incredible mentor. I eventually became a mentor to other airmen. And then the time came where they said, we want you to be involved with the ambassador program. And I said, what? Because the ambassador program <laughs> teaches you how to take your story and speak about it to try to impact others. And I don't know if y'all can tell while I was standing up here, but mm, public speaking is like mm, negative three on my list of things that I like to do. <laughs> I get nervous. So I was basically dragged in kicking and screaming. And it was only because it was those people who had empowered me so much to that point through sports were pushing me to go there that I decided, you know, I'm going to give it a try. And when you all see what's going to happen, I'm not doing this anymore. And I went. And I'm still speaking. But there's something that I, I try to get across every time I talk about empowerment and resiliency. And that's that I had this idea in my head that I had to be whole, 
and that I had to be better, and I had to be healed in order to make an impact on anyone else's life. And what I've found is that that's not necessarily the case. I hear so often, and I know you've heard it too, that hurt people hurt people. And let's get real, we hurt ourselves too. But the more I grow and the more I'm empowered, the more I see that hurt people also can have the power to make the biggest changes. Hurt people can get down with a level of empathy that makes other people can't quite reach. And hurt people can spark changes and inspire others. I speak because I've had so much love and empowerment poured into me that it's my turn to speak now. There are times when I get so afraid and so worried that I don't know how to press forward. Still. And that's, that's what I want to push on today. As my boyfriend and service dog can attest, uh, probably been a nightmare for the last at least 24 hours. <laughs> Just a ball of nerves. But that's important, because if I wasn't nervous, would I be this passionate about what I'm talking about? I've said it before that I feel like my voice is a whisper. And when I speak, I speak mostly about sexual assault in the military. Um, and I do that because there's never been one time that I've spoken where someone hasn't come up to me afterwards and let me know that they have been through a similar experience. Not one time. And that's why I speak. I feel like my voice is a whisper, but I've been empowered. And now I have the responsibility, no matter how quiet I feel my voice is, to speak up. Because someone did that before for me. And someone pushed that love into me. I ask who's empowering whom, because the more I find myself trying to turn around now in the position I'm, I am and try to empower other people, the more... I become empowered. I have grown more. I have found out more about myself, about the world, and other people since I embraced the empowerment that people pushed into me than I have in any other aspect, any other period in my life. Sometimes it's hard when you're stuck down in what feels like this ditch and you don't know how to climb out, right? And that's okay. I think it's okay. Because that's when you reach a hand out, right? And you let someone else help you up. Empowerment sometimes means having the humility to say, I'm not doing really well, and I, I need to be infused with someone else's power. I know that I've only been able to achieve what I've been able to achieve, both through speaking through sports, anything I do. Because I have love that's poured into me. I have people who believe in me when I don't have the power to believe in myself. So surround yourself with those people and never underestimate the impact you can have on another person's life. And I know this because my life is, is changed. My life is saved. I'm alive because of empowerment. And every single one of you, every single one of you, has the opportunity to be that power and that light in someone else's life. Thank you.